Welcome back to Harry Has a Cocktail, episode 51. Poolside edition. Yes, I'm coming to you from Westchester. I am currently house sitting and dog sitting for dear friends of mine who are on vacation. And I thought I would bring you a drink poolside because that's where I'm spending all my time this week. Here, let me take these off. Uh, the sun is right in my eyes. I actually may go ahead and leave my sunglasses on. I hope you don't mind. I'm sitting poolside and you would think I'm about to make a really tropical, tropical drink. I'm not. After episode 50, which, if you remember, was the mint julep, I didn't really like the mint julep very much, and I was feeling kind of bad about it. And, oh, by the way, occasionally, we're going to be hearing some croaking sounds, because right over here, there's a water feature, and right in there, if I can get a close-up of him, there's a frog. Do you see him? He's right there. Yes, yeah, so you might hear some croaking occasionally. I was talking to my friend Heidi. Hi, Heidi. And you know, the mint julep is beloved by Southerners, and I don't, I don't want to disparage anyone's favorite drink. I mean, far be it from me. Heidi was very encouraging to me. She said, listen, I'm Southern. She's from New Orleans. She was saying, look, I'm from the South. I love bourbon, but the mint julep, not so much. Actually, I think her exact quote was, meh. So, you know, I don't feel so bad. I mean, if a Southerner doesn't like it, then, you know, why should I? I know, I feel the same way. Then we got into this conversation about mint. She looked up a few drinks for me that are specifically made with creme de menthe. Creme de menthe, creme de menthe. I never know how to say it. It's not cream de menthe, but it's basically this is creme de menthe. And there are two kinds of creme de menthe. One is uh, a green kind and the other kind is white. It doesn't have a, a, the green dye in it. She looked up a couple of drinks and she suggested, why don't you make a couple of drinks using creme de menthe and sort of see if you can find some other, Wow, I knew I wasn't gonna be able to control all of the elements out here, out in nature, but I didn't really quite realize that the frog out here is a creme de menthe fan. She found a website called thespruceeats.com and she found 10 different recipes using creme de menthe. I chose a couple of them and this one that I'm going to present is called the Emerald Isle. Now, ooh, the sun is starting to set a little bit, so I think I'll take these off now. How do I look? Do I look all right? No, I'm gonna leave these on. The Emerald Isle, creme de menthe. The reason it's called creme de menthe, by the way, is not because it's creamy. It's not creamy like Bailey's or something like that. The reason it's called creme, it's a kind of liqueur that is higher in sugar. It has a much higher sugar content. That's why it's called creme de menthe. Well, the sun is going down a little bit. I will take my shades off. All right, creme de menthe drinks usually are categorized as dessert cocktails, which makes complete sense, right? Because there's more sugar, and so they're sweeter, and so they're desserty. So the Emerald Isle has just a touch of creme de menthe, and it's mixed together with one of my favorite all-time spirits, which if you're a viewer of the show, you know what I'm talking about. Gin, yes, this happens to be one of my favorite gins. And it just so happens that my friend Robert bought this bottle of gin for me to have while I was here at his home. So thank you, Robert, uh, very much. And actually, when I was looking through the spruceeats.com recipe, they suggested this gin specifically to use with this drink. So I thought, how fortuitous. Let's get started, shall we? Here is how you make an Emerald Isle. First, fill your cock taker with a crap ton of... First, fill your cocktail shaker with a crap ton of ice. It fell over. It's going well. One and a half ounces of gin. One and a half. Next is a teaspoon Yes, a teaspoon of creme de menthe. One teaspoon. And finally, this seems a little strange to me, but two dashes of Angostura bitters. Dash, dash. Now we are going to shake vigorously and I'm going to go ahead and shake it while I go and get the chilled cocktail glass out of the freezer inside the house. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so now you're going to strain it into a chilled martini glass. Ooh, ooh, it's so chilly. And run all the way from the freezer. Oh, 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 oh. Look how green and pretty that is. Okay, let's try the Emerald Isle. Mmm, interesting. Yeah, this is actually pretty good. Look at this. 
Oh, look how green. One of the reasons why they suggested using this particular gin, Botanist, this is a Scotch gin, believe it or not. It's made in Scotland. That's why it's Scotch. On the island of Islay? Is that how you say that? Islay? Islay? The reason that they, they suggested it is because they actually use mint as one of the botanicals in this gin. So they thought it paired really nicely with it. This does not feel like a dessert cocktail to me. It says very clearly in the recipe, the reason why there's only a teaspoon is because they said if you use too much of creme de menthe, the creme de menthe would overpower the gin. I don't have a lot of experience with creme de menthe. I have never once in my life had a drink with creme de menthe, never. Cause you know, I don't like the sweet drinks very much. So it stands to reason that I wouldn't really have, have ever had creme de menthe. Right. And um, mm -hmm. I know. What's nice about this is that the gin is still present and the creme de menthe, it has just a really nice minty, when I first tasted it, it almost tasted like mouthwash. Mouthwash is usually minty and it has alcohol as well. So it, it stands to reason that it might taste a little bit, a bit medicinal maybe. But I think that's where these two dashes of bitters come in because if this was just gin and creme de menthe, I think the creme de menthe would overpower the gin without a doubt. And so you add that final element of bitters and it just kind of tamps it down a little bit so that it doesn't taste like mouthwash. It's like mouthwash with a difference. And what's also nice is that it helps the cocktail taste herbal. It has an herbaceous quality to it, but it doesn't have a sweet herbaceous quality. It's not like a peppermint candy. The balance of the gin, which has all these botanicals and everything else, you know, who knows what the hell's in here. What this does is the gin pulls back the sweetness of the creme de menthe and sort of returns it to its herbal roots, which it basically is. Mint is just a plant that comes out of the ground. So rather than it tasting on the verge of candy, which next episode we'll have one that tastes more like candy. I'm gonna switch to this camera now because maybe this has given me a little bit more. I feel more relaxed in this camera. Although I look pretty good in this one too. <laughs> I don't mean I look good, I mean I look relaxed. I mean, I look okay. I gotta say, this is delightful. I was afraid that if I drank this tonight, because I haven't had my dinner yet, I was afraid that this was going to taste like a dessert cocktail. And I was afraid, oh, I hope this doesn't ruin my appetite, you know, because I still need to eat. But it doesn't. It tastes like an herbaceous gin martini. Have I said enough? I think I have. This is a really delightful drink. The Emerald Isle. Thank you, as always, for watching Harry's A Cocktail. And we'll see you back here next time. Cheers!